Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Computational Chemistry. My name is Dr. Ismail Badran and I'm from the Najah National University in Nablus, Palestine. And uh, this is lecture 4, uh, Optimization and Frequency Calculations. So I think we went over the theoretical part in the, in the lecture. And today we are going to uh, perform the, the tutorial. So if you run all uh, to the last slide here, it says exercise perform optimization frequency calculations for acetone and uh, nitromethane. So I will do the acetone first and I will do the next one. And also we need to compare the calculated IR spectra, which is the one we obtained from the, from the calculations, uh, to that w from the NEST. So of course NEST is the American uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology the one that has uh, so much uh, information about chemical compounds. Uh, the next part of the tutorial we need also ca calculate the bond dissociation energies in fluoromethane but in this time we need to take the zero point uh, energy in, in, in consideration. So uh, I will run this tutorial first on my computer of course you can run this in a server or whatever. Uh, I have Gaussian 9 in, soul in my computer unfortunately I have uh, Gaussian 16 on the server but uh, we'll run it with the Gaussian 9 first. I'm going to open uh, Gauss view. Um, and of course, as I told you before, uh, you need really to organize your files and follow all, all the instructions uh, regarding uh, naming the files, having no, uh, no spaces or anything. And I'm just going to start with the Gauss view here. I'm going to right click and open the builder. So acetone is a trigonal planar carbon. So in this carbon, this is tetrahedral. So I'm going to change this into trigonal planar. From here, you see here, if you click on the carbon, it will give you the different geometries of carbon. If you click on another atom, it will give you also different things. So on carbon, I'm going to choose the trigonal planar. I'm going to click once, and that will give you a carbon with trigonal geometry. I'm going to move up to oxygen. So oxygen, and I'm going to add a double bond double bond oxygen to this. Of course you can make a mistake and click anywhere but you can always control Z this and return to that to the previous one. So this is not acetone, this is formaldehyde. I'm just going to add metal groups again clicking on carbon and choosing the tetrahedral, tetrahedral carbon and uh, put this one here, put the ones on there and now we have uh, acetone ready for our calculation. So I'm gonna save this file as an input file uh, run it to the program and it will give you it will give me an, an output file of course so first uh, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna right click again calculate and perform a calculation job so you can uh, use the wizard here uh, to set up your calculations or you can also always as I said uh, use the, the editor so we'll choose the optimization and frequency job from here so opt and frick uh, so basically we don't have to change anything in this window so just leave everything as is for now. Move up to the method. We're going to use DFT. So the functional, a good functional is um, a Minnesota functional. The Minnesota group of functionals that made by Truller group are really good functionals. The MN15L, the M06, M05. You wouldn't see them here on this list. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just leave this as B3lib and I'm going to change it from the, from the editor. I'm going to choose uh, a medium basis set 631, uh, 631G. I'm going to add DNP polarization to that. That's enough. Leaving the charge as zero, and of course, acetone is singlet. Title, we can provide this later, of course. So depending on your computer, you can choose uh, whatever RAM, whatever processors you need, depending on your computer, depending on the server you're running. So I'm going to here specify 4 gigabyte of RAM, so 4 gigabyte because I have 16 gigabyte in my computer and uh, uh, for the processors um, just to be on the safe side I'm gonna just use one processor for now but if you can play with this and use more processors you can do that now uh, that's pretty much it there are other options here that we will go over them later on but for now we're gonna just uh, save this and run it into the program so click edit and that will uh, ask you to save the file now I'm gonna save the file on my computer and I will show you that this actually wouldn't work because uh, 
So here I'm going to my computer and I'm gonna open the documents file and I'm gonna here uh, make a new folder and name it uh, let's say chem, chem uh, 584 which is the name of the course I'm gonna here this is my trick I always copy this like steal this path so I'm gonna click on this path here control C to, to seal it and going back to Gaussian and on the saving file window I'm gonna paste this path here so that so that now I am actually inside the folder that I just created I'm gonna name this file acetone uh, underscore opt underscore frick and then you can put whatever you like like that functionally you're using so I'm just gonna go up to zero 01 for now and save that file inside so now the, f the file is saved he gave you um, the input file and uh, I'm gonna show you that this actually won't work so if you close this he will ask you do you want to run this file I will say yes if you have Gaussian in your computer and suddenly he he's given you an error and this happens to many people so many times so if you click OK you won't actually th say anything from er error he didn't even continue so in the in the output file of Gaussian he's giving you information about the program and the uh, authors but after that nothing he's not even giving you uh, an error message and I just discovered this is uh, so silly because it's the, it, it, it relates to the position or the location of the file you're using, you're, you're saving at. So I'm going to repeat this again. I'm going to close this, close Gaussian. I'm going to go back to, just close this window. I'm going to go back here. Okay. So the file I just saved, that GGF file, the input file, he already created a log file. If you open that file, again, you won't see anything. So I'm going to delete this output file. I'm going to delete the checkpoint file that he created. I'm just going to take this file, cut it, and put it in different location. Uh, it depends on your computer. You will find that just a simple location will work, like your desktop or your whatever. I found that if I save it here, it will work. I'm just going to save it right here. And if you... Uh, open this file with a notepad I have also in my computer installed notepad plus plus which is uh, an open source free program much better than notepad the way you do this is you program your computer to open the, the input files using the notepad plus plus so you always so again um, you right click and you open with and choose program and you and you, and you program your computer to open this type of files with this notepad plus plus so you say always use uh, this app to open the files so here what you need to do if you're working in your computer just delete this line the whole line the checkpoint file line just delete that okay and that should that should work and as we said we're not going to use b3lib uh, a good functional is M mn15l this is a group of uh, Minnesota functionals we're going to talk about them uh, in the next lecture but mn15l has been created or has been developed after Gaussian line has been actually made so as I said the mn15l has been created or developed after Gaussian line has been made so you need the Gaussian 16 or later versions of Gaussian to do that and you, you can always check the availability of functionals and basis sets or versus the version of the Gaussian so there's a continuous development of uh, basis sets and, and functionals and the programs they're not automatically adding these into into the programs it takes some time to adapt these uh, developments into the program so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna choose an earlier version of this Minnesota functional which is the M06L and uh, I also discovered that uh, I have a little problem with assigning the processor in my computer so I have removed also the lines assigning the memory and processors I'm just, just gonna use the defaults for now and here I have a line that says optfrec M06L which is a good functional from the Minnesota group an earlier version of the functional and with the same basis set so I'm gonna save this file and I'm gonna run it again into Gaussian so I have Gaussian open here so I'm opening the uh, input file so as I said again uh, you need actually to locate a location in or find a location in your computer that this uh, input file and output file would work so I'm gonna run this file save it again into the same location I have found that it's working on before so same output file save 
it says that there is a previous version it's going to override that and here it's the file is working so you see here the Gaussian is uh, performed the calculations so so it might take some time uh, till the job is done so we're gonna wait uh, a little bit and come back when this is finished uh, okay so as we see here the the job is finished it says normal termination of Gaussian 09 and now here we can see in the folder that we have an acetone output file so let's uh, open this in in both Notepad and Gaussian and Gaussian view and see what's going on. So this is the output file. Uh, there is so much information here that we can't talk about, of course, later. But at the end here, all the way to the end, uh, it looks like the, the the file is done. Took one minute and forty two seconds. Probably when I measured this, uh, it was more. But this may be the processing time, which is different than the actual clock. So you can actually uh, look at the at the out uh, at the date or time at which this is made and this is done so it looks like it took seven minutes in my computer here it always Gaussian gives you a quotation or something to remember and uh, this means the job is done now if we open this in Gauss view uh, the viewer I'm gonna drag this out file I'm gonna drag it here it opens with no problems this means we're okay and uh, the geometry here of the acetone the bond distances the angles should be the optimized geometry and if you compare this if you click here and there let's say and you look at this distance and you go back to the input file you will see a small change or a slight change in the bond distance if you click three, if you click three on three atoms it will give you the angle between three uh, these three atoms and you can again compare it to the previous uh, uh, one from the input file and you will see that there's uh, this is the optimized geometry this is the best geometry given at the basis set and uh, the method that you're using uh, let's go and uh, right click and see if the vi we have vibrations so that's good we we get vibrations uh, activated that means the job has been uh, successful in calculating the the frequencies uh, remember we asked for opt frick so we asked for optimization followed by frequencies so good so now we have uh, frequencies for acetone let's count these frequencies so we have uh, 24 uh, vibrational frequencies okay so we have here let's count the frequencies we have uh, 24 frequencies one of them is a uh, is a negative one we're gonna talk about this later but we have 24 frequencies and if we let's see if this uh, ap applies to the rule we have a, an acetone which looks like this right so it's not linear molecule it's planar molecule doesn't mean it's linear so it follows the 3 and minus 6 rule so how many we have we have four atoms four atoms and two that's 10 atoms so 3n minus 6 we should have 3n minus 6 vibration frequency so 3 times uh, 10 that's 30 minus 6 so we have yes we do have uh, 24 vibration frequencies and you look at you can look at them even look at you can Take, let's say the strongest one and start animation and that will show you that this strong uh, this corresponds to very strong um, CH stretching okay this is another one and so on so these are the frequencies of acetone and uh, what else you can click on the spectrum and that is the spectrum IR spectrum of acetone we do have a very one very strong one as we know as chemists around 1700 that's the CO bond stretching let's uh, see if you click on this one it will, it will highlight which frequency uh, is that that's around 1800 so let's click this and make sure yes it is the C double bond stretching in acetone uh, that's the one we observe in the IR at, uh, at 18 or 1700 if you go to the Google and Google the word nest uh, web book and let's start let's see if we have an IR an IR spectrum for acetone this is the nest chemistry web book you can search for name or formula or whatever you like so I'm gonna go for name and try acetone okay so we do have acetone here we have so much information about it acetone um, I'm gonna take a look at IR spectra so what do we have here? We have so much information, but here it says gas. So I'm gonna check on this one. What does it say? Gas. 
Oh, cool. So this is the IR spectrum of acetone. With the uh, frequencies around 1800, we have around 14 and 13. So you can c compare this. You can compare this with the spectrum that you obtained from the calculations. And that will be uh, it for uh, acetone tutorial. So you can repeat that and do it again for nitromethane. Before I leave, I just want to show you how small errors in making the input file will cause so much problems and you're gonna have to be actually patient when you're doing computational chemistry you will face so many errors you will be probably spending some time probably hours trying to fix problems and you'll find these problems are really silly for example um, any error here in the input file uh, because the computer will will just read that file and try to uh, try to dissect it or try to break it down into 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 tasks so for example if you have um, let's say a, s a no space here by mistake let's save this file and run it again and see if it works so So you see here right away it is giving you an error because of that. I, I, I have saved it in the same location, I followed the same procedure before, but I, the only thing is that the program is not now understanding what is going on and he's giving you the error. It says uh, one integer is an input because he's, he's expecting now he should, you should have, you should have uh, a line between the title card and the uh, multiplicity, but now he is expecting an integer here but he found uh, a letter which is C and now he got confused and he cannot uh, keep going so uh, the good thing about Gaussian and other computational chemistry program is that they communicate they communicate with you they tell you an error usually they give you an error you can google that error or try to read that error and see if you can if you can fix it so good luck good luck with that and uh, uh, I hope that I helped you or I showed you uh, how to and one of the other possible errors is that anything here let's say opt frick m n with this route card uh, you gotta have to make sure that it actually reads well uh, I see students and uh, users uh, playing up with this or putting uh, uh, like any letter or any anything that does not make sense here the program will retain a, an error um, again the, the the charge and multiplicity you have to make sure that this is correct and lastly uh, even if you remove these numbers it won't change anything because geometry connectivity you can actually remove that there is not uh, there is no for Gaussian needs empty line at the end so if you actually run this file probably it won't work even if everything looks fine just make sure when you prepare these input files to leave few empty lines at the end before you run the file so that's about that's about it for today I hope that you uh, enjoyed this and uh, good luck with the uh, with the next tutorial and we will see you in uh, another episode of this computation chemistry course thank you so much and have a good day